Hello, hello there. I see some people watching me. How are you doing today? Okay, hi. Um, just like my title says, I will be doing some Python development today and hopefully even achieve something interesting. Um, what exactly I want to do? Mm, I often work with remote development with Python like in docker container or uh, via via ssh and um, all tools which are not pycharm uh, sucks big time uh, as far as i know only pycharm has a decent development tool set which uh, allows me to seamlessly connect to remote python via ssh like docker windows linux subsystem and uh, whoever knows what else I can uh, sort of demonstrate it shortly but first first let me start the project because I did nothing off, sc off screen yeah let's kill this buffer do the text size normal maybe a little bit more I will call project I think I should have think about it before stream, <laughs> uh, but yeah. Will it be like Python remote? I'm I'm sure it's it exists somewhere on PyPI already, but I don't care now. Right. Okay, let's play with this. Starting with Docker file. Okay, mm. I want to create a Docker image with an SSH and with Python inside. And for this, I have to start from Python. Python something something. Yeah. Let's check what Python containers are there. 3772 is there like slim yes 372 slim from python 372 slim will it even work will it even work Um, C and D. Yeah, let's start from this. Um, let's build. Build it under the image remote Python remote test. Yeah, yeah, except normally. Form requires one of three arguments. Maybe this. Or this no okay so it has to be column I, I believe I I always keep keep forgetting how this damn image is called Okay, compilation is finished. And now I should be able to see it amongst my. Yeah, here it is Python remote. Great. Let me start it. 
docker run python remote echo not found well who would have thought <laughs> uh, well at least it, it tried at least it tried so yeah let's uh, continue with installing some pip packages first of all pip install excuse me Django like pytest I want to I want to install some third-party packages uh, to play with them later like Django pytest maybe flask what else what else numpy right okay let's build it once more um, Python mode please what oh I'm supposed to run this Okay, and let's instead of echoing, by the way, compilation is finished. Instead of echoing it out, let's uh, let's 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 uh, do like ls on pip freeze. Yeah, it will be more visual. It will be more visual. Great, let's run it actually. Peep now found. Jesus Christ, why? Uh. Why not? Why the freak not? Okay, let's search it up because I never, I never remember how to work with this <laughs> docker okay, docker singy no, not this one I want cmd uh, like this then it's painful already okay 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 let's continue with um, SSH now uh, docker SSH in container yes, Dockerize an SSH service I remember like there there have to be a tutorial on docker and here is let's just straight copy copy this mm. oh that's how you should def should have made a command. Oh Jesus Christ. Alright. So we're getting update and install an open SSH server. Create open create SSH server directory. <clears throat> creating a screencast and ah, creating root user with password screencast then allow this user to log in with password then we 
a sesh login fix otherwise users kicked out after login okay all right not visible i don't know what it is i will delete it visible equals now slash edc slash profile all right and we're starting ssh as a daemon okay let's run pip afterwards or no or here after we're getting open ssh server okay let's build this quickly Now it downloads pip packages. Okay. Perfect. The image will be huge now because like every every single every run creates its own layer. And, uh, and it's done. Now let's run it. Uh, I suppose I should have run it in detached state. Jesus Christ. Please don't shoot them. Okay. Let's do. Okay, it's running. And let's kill it. Let's Docker stop it. Okay. Docker run, I guess it's minus, minus D, right, detach, yes, detach, all right, so let's SSH 0, 0, 1, like root, okay, connection refused, really really it is running oh i should have uh, redirect ports okay let's stop it once more stop us uh, i keep forgetting those docker port mapping No, docker run port mapping. Uh, it's stupid docker forum. Run reference. Yes, sports. Ports, sports, ports, ports or sports oh expose in common ports no oh no oh no ah.
Oh, here it is, minus P. Minus P, it's like IP, host port, container port. All right. Minus D. Um, minus P. Host port will be like like this, and container port will be twenty two. Python remote. Will this work? Will this work? Let's find out. Eight 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 zero. Oh yeah, it works. Screencast, and it it doesn't accept my password. Okay, since it doesn't accept my password, I'll try to bash penetrate it. Uh, Docker exec minus it. Um, yes, bash. All right. Is there a cat? Yes. What text editors are here? Okay, no, <laughs> no, no text editors are here. Okay, let's cat it out. Cat like um, where is SSH config? Oh yeah, okay. EDC SSH SSH config. Okay. We should see a low password here. And uh, permit lo root login. And it's coming it out. Jesus Christ. Permit login. I think I have to add a pound here. And rebuild this stupid image. Wow. Oh, thanks Will50 for following, really appreciate it, I hope you will enjoy the stream. And my stream elements alerts actually working, you're the first to test them out, isn't it great? Okay, let's check it out. Run. Oh. Port is already allocated. Come on. What do you mean port already allocated? Let me stop this motherfucker. Cool stream. Oh, you saw this on Reddit. So this subreddit actually works. Who would have thought, right? <laughs> All right, let's SSH this one more time. Oh yeah, and we're in, great. <clears throat> so now we're SSH'd into our container. Let's check Python packages. Here we see like Django and Flask and all this stuff. Great, great, really great. And also what I want to do, mm, I want to add some volumes in my container. Yes, I want to add some volumes in my container. And let's quickly find out how to do this Docker volumes. Uh, 
I'm like so used to working with Docker through Docker Compose uh, that I'm keep forgetting how to use plain Docker files. But I don't want to use Docker Compose now because I want to sort of sharpen my Docker skills. All right. Um, create and manage volumes. Um, I don't want to create actual volume. I want to mount my directory into the container. So yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, dope song. Sounds like super hexagonal stuff. All right. Where's the Docker file? Uh, okay. Docker. Docker file. Volumes. Volumes. Mm. Docker file volumes. Maybe here. Mm. Okay, volume. Volumes. Oh yeah, this is volume di directive. Instruction. I'm sorry, it's instructions. All right. Here's the volume. The volume instruction creates a mount point with the specified name and marks it as holding externally mounted volumes from native host or other containers. Containers. The value can be a JSON array, a volume, or a plain string with multiple arguments such as such as s for more information examples and mounting instructions via the docker client okay and here's a little example this docker file results in an image that causes docker run to create a new mount point at slash my wall and copy the greeting file into the newly newly created volume <coughs> all right mm. let's check how do we share those Okay, so I need I need a volume, right? Let's add this. Let's add the volume. I will call it SRC SRC. All right, and. Is there like something like mount here? Run label maintainer expose nth at copy entry point Borg dear What's work dear? The work dear instruction sets the working directory for any run CMD entry point. Ah, okay. I don't need this. I need mount. I need mount. Okay, let's check this documentation.
Originally the dash V or dash dash volume flag was used for standalone containers and the dash dash mount flag was used for swarm services. However, oh I remember, I remember when it was interesting. However, starting with uh, Docker 17.06, you can also use dash dash mount with standalone containers. In general, dash dash mount is more explicit and verbose. All right, the biggest difference? Oh, a real programming language stream. Yes, Zoding. Hey, how is your sleeping schedule? <laughs> <laughs> mm. Oh yeah, mount is too explicit for me. It's actually great. I think I managed to recover. Thanks. I'm glad for you. I'm glad for you. And I I wake up uh, in 8 or 9 a.m. I guess fourth day in a row. So I can celebrate with you. Cheers. Where's the stupid dash V? <coughs> so do they want me to specify the whole freaking F stop? In dash mount, I want to. I want to dash v. Oh yeah, so my wall. Here it is. Here it is. Um. So Docker, run. Minus minus help. Yes, here's volume list. Bint mount a volume. And how do I specify it? Docker run. Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, my wall data. Docker volume create my wall. If you start a container with a volume that does not exist yet, Docker creates the volume for you. The following examples mounts the volume my wall into slash app in the container. All right. So attach the name minus wall. Here's the volume, and dash app is the directory in the container. All right. Source. All right. All right. Destination. Oh, populate a volume using a container. Well, thank you, Docker. User share engines. If you start a container which creates new volume as both, and the container has files or directories in the directory to be mounted, the directory's contents are copied into volume. The container then mounts and uses the volume, and other containers may use this too. Okay, I guess. Yeah, let's let's play with this for a while, for a little bit. So, <clears throat> I'm creating the container with mo volume instruction. And now I want to mount it. 
and now I want to actually mount it. So basically, I'll rebuild Python remote. I'll rebuild the image a little every, very, very fast. And I will stop, I will stop uh, the previous one. And I will docker run minus d minus minus name let's attach name to it like lol and then 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 minus v minus v what minus v what volume name here all right Uh, did I mess it up already? Which specifies send marks. All right. New mount mount point at and copy the. Okay. Okay, let's use in dash v my wall slash app. Okay, slash src slash it should be it should point to my to my directory. Let's populate it with my home. Not not with my home, with my um work slash home slash nerd workspace will it even work okay and uh, exec minus it ls okay we're seeing src folder And it's empty, and it's empty. It's empty, although, although I have something in my directory, right? Right. So what's wrong? Uh, let's Google it a little fast. Docker mount local directory to volume a host directory in a docker container stack overflow to the rescue yes so we're creating this <clears throat> couple ways you can do this the simplest way to do so is to use docker file add command like so However, any changes made to this directory on the host after building a docker file will not show up in the container and that's not what I want. A second way to do this is the way you attempted which is amount of volume. Due to trying to be as portable as possible you cannot map a host directory to a docker container directory within a docker file. Okay, it makes sense, I guess. Host directory, container. Di oh, sheesh. So it's the other way around, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I messed up the order, I guess. Let's check it out. Exit and docker stop lol. And let's run it once more. Uh, well, messed up. 
I try to use transpose <laughs> minus v minus v local directory nerd workspace Python remote column src uh, Python run this please the container names is already in use by container you have to remove or rename that container ah oh, come on I don't want to remove containers every time okay docker exec minus it lol ba bash ls src oh jesus christ now it works would you look at that would you look at that isn't it cool isn't it cool okay so i will create a project layout really quick and we'll continue to explore remote interpreters with python so I guess since this is my project uh, I should have something like test um, test source right like test src directory here let's create it test src s Jesus Christ rename how do I rename the docker it's capital R. Rename to test SRC. Yes. And this directory will be using as a test project root. Correct? Correct. So let's docker stop LOL. Can I ram it? Yes. And run with a Python remote test src. Okay, docker exec minus it lol bash lsrc. It's empty, and when I when I create a file here, uh, test.py. Let's install language server. <laughs> First try, yeah. When Python only became a thing, it was so simple. Now you need pip, virtual length, docker, and all sorts of shit. I think it happens with every technology now, especially if uh, we consider docker. Um, like, literally, you can open <laughs> any job description and it will be docker all the way. But pip and virtual inf, I think they are old as shit, because when I started to using Python, they already existed for a long time, like and considered to be a best practice already. Uh -huh, okay, let's import a project root, I guess. Do not ask more. Do nothing. Import project root. Import project by selecting root directory interactively. Okay. Bam 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 bam. Oh, fuck. I selected my workspace. Well, alright, I guess. Let's check it out. Okay, so test py now in my docker file. Let's quickly... Ooh, auto completion. Cut, test, src, test py. All right, you see import os here. Okay, so we're good to go. So we are good to go.
now I actually want to show you what it's like to develop remotely in PyCharm. Um, if I, for example, in my Emacs try, try to import Django, you can see that there is uh, no hints or like for Flask. Um, Flask is here, but it's only because Flask is installed globally. So it's a really like bad example. Hmm. I started to play with Python eight years ago when I was a student. And I mostly use it for simple scripting tasks for myself. I didn't know about best practices. Well, yeah, I guess for simple scripting tasks, you don't need pip, you don't need virtual length. You just uh, create Python script and that's all. And uh, nowadays it's absolutely the same. You only need a pip and docker and virtual length if you're creating like a big project with some external dependencies like web frameworks or database connectors. Basically the stuff which you absolutely don't want uh, to be installed globally. Yeah, I agree. Right. And virtual env is an interesting thing because it's actually just a <laughs> bunch of symlinks. <laughs> Big project in a script language. <laughs> you got me, got me. <laughs> this is why Instagram sucks. Because it's written in Python. Uh, yeah, so Flask is a bad example because it's installed globally. And now I want to fire up PyCharm. God bless me. It will be quite laggy. Please. Please leave. Okay, okay. Here it starts. Here it is. So painfully slow. All right, let's create a new project or or I'd rather open directory. Home nerd workspace so and I guess it will be it. This will be it. Yeah, now it's proprietary ID stream. I don't want to show these stupid tips. Close. Okay. So let's uh, quickly show what I want to do uh, by myself. <coughs> In PyCharm. You slow motherfucker. You can select interpreter for a project. In interpreters menu it by default shows my global interpreter but I want to I can click here I can click add and I can select remote interpreter here SSH docker docker compose and this kind of stuff so let's for example uh, Imagine that I can select that I want to select SSH interpreter. I can select a host 127001 local host the port which is uh, which is uh, like I think 8880 username root and uh, and yeah next can't connect connection refused it's because it's because uh, oh spy charm um ssh connection oh it's because i did not expose ports let me expose this ports docker stop and then docker run again directory minus p 8880 no it's like 
an IP and you you don't see shit because of my webcam you don't see nothing because of my webcam connection refused yeah hard mode eight 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 zero twenty two right oh name value but god uh, how did I do this last time docker oh minus p hey it was exactly in this format what do you want from me what do you want from me huh okay minus name l o l and here and uh, no unknown short ah minus minus name dash dash name invalid reference format okay i'm keeping screw up uh docker run my dash p ah jesus fucking christ thanks you soding Hey, but it's it's correct now, right? Dash dash name L O L. Dash V. I forget about dash V. Oh yeah, yeah. I should have looked more clearly. Docker. R M yeah works now i can <laughs> docker file detection see what this shit can do this slow slow java based shit which i love by the way um i want to add i want to add ssh interpreter with the correct port this time and with the root username yeah and password from my docker file and it also supports like key pair thingy all right next an interpreter user bin python i'm not sure but i'm actually not sure if it's user bin python let's quickly check this out Which Python? Which Python? Jesus fucking Christ. It's user local bin Python. User local bin Python. And it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think in my other config. Oh, no, in, in my old computer. I had even an alias <laughs> because I keep misspelling this all the time. <laughs> I don't want to sync anything. Thank you. Let's finish this up. Oh no, default key ring. What do I do? What do I do? Let me quickly hide it from you guys so you don't hack me oh yeah and and you see now pycharm says django flask and all my other uh pytest dependencies which i've uh, installed in my docker file um uh, here right 
here, so I've installed Django, PyTest, Flask, and NumPy, and now uh, PyCharm, and now PyCharm sees this. Oh, here, criminal scum. I messed up my layout, sorry. Yeah, wait, here it is. Slow motherfucker. Ah. Where are you? Yeah, so it sees NumPy, PyTest, Django, you name it. Okay, yeah, I want to apply this as my main interpreter. Click OK. All right, so now, now if I also in PyCharm map my project routes, what's this? From deployment configuration, I don't want deployment configuration, what are you talking about? Sometimes it's like really inconvenient. Yeah, workspace. So if I map my test SRC to SRC in container, it will also understand this. Jesus Christ, it's so small. Let's quickly increase this font. I, I never, I never opened PyCharm under this new streaming user. Yeah, like, let's increase this a little bit. Okay, looks, looks manageable. And I can import, import, Ah, it's indexing. Now this huge sheet will be indexing forever. <laughs> yeah. And now you see PyCharm helps me with importing like stuff like Django or from Django DB import models, right? Or from Django DB models import, I don't know, model. And I can go to the definition. It will conveniently load the Django model definition. And uh, yeah, this kind of stuff. I also can enable Django support as language and frameworks in Django here. Yeah, basically I can specify the Django root. And I can specify Django settings and all, all this all this stuff. And Django will run management commands, it will run all in this container, right? So basically, uh, this is what I want to do uh, in my project. I want to make a support for remote interpreters, but I want to do this um, in a way which will be independent of PyCharm and independent of Emacs uh, and yeah, that's basically it. So, uh, as I'm, uh, I was thinking about it, and for now, I think that my main sort of idea is to create some wrapper around Python, which uh, which text editors could be pointing to. And it will be correctly redirect virtual environment and the path to executable. So in PyCharm, I can add this uh, run configurations, right? So it's like, uh, for example, if it's a PyTest, I can select interpreter, this remote one and uh, PyCharm will run Python inside my Docker container via SSH. And this is what I want to achieve. I want my little tool redirect uh, running requests to my container and execute it there. And when uh, somebody ex asks for auto completion, it should redirect to correct uh, virtual length, but but it shouldn't try to use virtual length inside Docker container. Instead, 
it should index this virtual inf locally and work with local copy of this because if docker container or ssh server is indeed remote i mean uh, not on local computer but somewhere uh, somewhere in in the cloud then uh, that kind of auto completion will be painfully slow and that's why i believe pycharm indexing all locally so if i for example open the model definition you can see here the path it's like somewhere inside the dot pycharm cache directory it doesn't open it in my uh, container it opens it locally because pycharm knows uh, i think before i begin i should mention that uh, one project actually can do this it's anaconda mode anaconda mode emacs yeah so this beautiful python plugin python pa package can work uh, in a way close to this with docker containers with vagrant servers yeah so uh, with the help of trump so you see you can specify remote host and uh, anaconda anaconda mode will use the will use remote python for all the completions and for running scripts like this yeah and like this with docker so it knows about docker as well but there's a couple problems first it's uh, emacs only so it won't work uh, outside of emacs and the second it does not support uh, downloading virtual env uh, to the local host i think uh, it would be easy to just uh, contribute downloading support to this package so yeah uh, when it works with remote interpreter it downloads uh, the virtual env locally and works and works with this with it but I think it would be more interesting to try uh, implementing uh, native support. I mean, native uh, editor, um, editor agnostic, I mean. Yeah. So with this in mind, with this in mind, with this in mind, I think we can continue we can continue yeah so what we have we have docker file and we have this stupid idea folder which will which was created by PyCharm sounds like an interesting project yeah and uh, I wanted to do this for a long time already but uh, since I'm a lazy motherfucker and uh, I don't have motivation any motivation whatsoever I <laughs> decided to start streaming like exclusively for this project can you believe me let's init git here in python remote exactly my home directory is repository already and uh, I don't want I want to add this one I want to add docker file and I want to commit, right? Streaming helps with motivation greatly. Exactly. Even, even if nobody watches me now, uh, I, I still I still know that I'm in front of camera, and uh, I won't like scroll Twitter or watch YouTube. Although I think if i will be streaming uh twitter watching and youtube reactions i will become uh, more popular instantly because nobody needs programming uh <laughs> everybody wants reactions video reaction videos i'd abandon nothing a long time ago if i didn't stream it well yeah i think so i think so and now we have a great great lisp engine thanks to stream thanks to streams 
Uh, all right, so let it. What's um? I forgot how to commit lol. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. So I want to commit. I want to commit a Docker file. Oh Jesus Christ! I... What a... mm, I screw up my. Yeah, let me. Let me restart this shit really quick. I don't want to save. Yes, I want to kill. As clan exit anyway. Okay. Soon we will have another Emacs bot for games, exactly. And unlike... What? <laughs> and uh, unlike this Emacs, this Emacs, I mean, your Emacs will actually have double buffering, uh, hardware acceleration and all this shit, right? Okay. Uh, Docker file for experiments. For experiments. Did it even work? Yeah, now it will work. Docker file for Docker file for experiments. All right, first commit. Yeah, I'm a programmer. I'm a programmer now. Mom, mom, look at me. So I want to... Interesting. Actual programmer. Yeah, yeah. Not, not Emacs list programmer, like an actual, actual decent programmer. I'm so proud of myself. And uh, I think... I think I will uh, quickly create a GitHub repository and... Uh, I think I will end the stream because I have a real work to do. <laughs> so yeah. Um, that's how you add new... No. Okay. Um, now it's... Uh, oops. What am I doing? Let's create new repository. New repository. All right, it will be public. I don't know how to call it. I really don't know how to call it. Let's call it, and ironically, Python remote interpreter. Uh, so lame. Let's go to PyPI real quick. Do we have? We have remote PDB. We can. We have remote dev. What is remote dev? Maybe somebody. Maybe somebody already created what he needed. No. All right. It would be actually quite interesting. Okay, yeah. Let's create. Let's call it Python Remote. Let's create repository. Blah blah blah. Yeah. 
This will be my new origin. Remote add origin. This will be a remote URL. Push default to origin. And let's push it. Did it work? Yes. Hey! Steam is better. Ah, uh, well, you know. Steam is better. But good old games is even better. Is even more better. You know? So, yeah, okay. I think I think this will be it for today. Um, one hour stray streaming is quite a lot for me. <laughs> um, so yeah. Thanks for watching. Well, feels bad, man. Don't feel bad. I hope I will be streaming again. If if uh, people won't won't bully me. <laughs> If people won't bully me yeah thank you for watching thank you for your thanks for your conversation thanks for the discussion thanks for helping me with screwing local host i really appreciate it yeah man goodbye i hope to see you later <laughs>